Welcome to the show. Um, happy belated Father's Day. I'm actually recording this on Father's Day, but I have no idea when I'm actually going to put it up. So uh, it just comes after Father's Day. All the fathers out there, uh, happy Father's Day. Today's video, war. This means war. Uh, the world's kind of crazy right now. We got Iran bombing Syria. We got we got English people. God, England right now is psychotic. Uh, things aren't doing too much better here in the states. We got a president under siege. We've got uh, people shooting each other left and right all over the place. We're even shooting politicians again, just for fun. Um, so I want to take some time today in this video to talk about war. This means war. The world at war. And uh, how the world and war itself is changing. That's the topic today on this episode. employed superhero uh, coming to you live from Casa de Clark the music conservatory of Casa de Clark today we are going to talk about a number of topics that are near and dear to my heart um, the main thrust of today's topic is uh, this means war it's getting crazy out there. I know you're worried. Calm down. We're going to make sense of all of it. Just relax. Take a breath. Have some dip. Uh, before I get going on my, my main topic, uh, I was at Walmart the other day. I had to buy some vittles. I had to buy some dog food for the Wonder Dog. And... Um, I noticed at the Walmart as I was coming in the doors. How's the hair? Is the hair good? The hair looks pretty good. By the way, I've got a fan on behind me because it's been unseasonably warm in Iowa for a couple of days. Weather's been kind of crazy around here. So if the audio's a little messed up, I got a fan on. Deal with it. I'm not going to sit here and, and sweat like a pig for you people. All right, I got to be comfortable. Anyway, so I was at the Walmart the other day, and um, I come into the Walmart, and uh, I, I, I pick, got a cart. at the I was buying Vittles, so I had to get a cart. So I pick out a cart, and I, I turn around and start my shopping experience, my shopping escapade at the Walmart and who should I see at the Walmart but this 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 woman I'm thinking she maybe was in her late 20s oldest late 20s 26 28 somewhere in there she had um, 
tattoos, and I'm, I'm not shitting on tattoos here. I don't care one way or the other. Scarify yourself any way you wish. It's your skin. Go crazy. Um, but she had, I believe you, the tattoo people, call the, they call it a sleeve, where you have your whole arm tattooed. Uh, she had her whole arm, both arms tattooed. Um, and they weren't happy-go-lucky tattoos. You know, there was no, you know, rainbow bright. There were no, uh, there were no teddy bears, cuddly things. There were like, you know, skulls and, 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 and a lot of spiders and some webbing, you know, like some webs, or like a spider, you know what I'm saying? Like a spider web kind of a thing. And, um... So she's all tatted up. She's got the the hair with the red streaks going through it. You know, she's got streaking in her hair. And it's red. You know what I'm saying? Like red streaks. And, and not like, you know, human red, but like red red. You know, like, like Crayola red going through her hair. And and her nose was pierced. She had a she had a a ring in her nose and the nostrils. Again, I haven't got a problem with that at all. It's your skin. It's your body. You know, uh, do what you want to it. Um, so there's there's the look. She's wearing uh, a, I, I believe you call it a wife beater. You know, the white t-shirts, the wife beaters. And, and some shorts. And at her side, her right side, was, I'm thinking, maybe a five-year-old girl, five-ish, about yay high, about five, I'm thinking five. And uh, the five-year-old girl is, is attached to her mother's hand. I'm assuming it's her mother. It may not be her child, I don't know. Never met her, never talked to her, but I'm assuming it was her child. And the look on this woman's face, this 25, 28 year old girl, uh, made me stop and think, you know, when she was in her early 20s, possibly her teens, getting all these skulls and spiders and, 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 and Satan and death tattooing up and down her arms did she ever think she'd wind up five six years later in a walmart with her five-year-old daughter buying blow pops seemed funny to me i just you know take it for what it's worth i just a tab below you don't see very often you know tatted up five-year-old daughter and the five-year-old daughter is all fucked up. Her hair's a mess. Dirty shirt, dirty short. She's probably been outside playing all day. She's five. Give her, cut her a break. Yeah. So much for that rebellious teenage years, huh? The moral of the story, boys and girls, is you can get tatted all you want. You can pierce your shit and color your hair, but eventually you hit thirty. Ah. So anyway, the world at war. Um, I tend to think that it's a. I don't want to sound a little more dramatic than I'm really trying to be. Um, it's getting crazy out there. Is it just me, or is it getting crazy out there? Um, you got you got English people. Uh, you got, I, I believe, there. this isn't me. I'm just watching the news. But it sounds like uh, uh, Muslim sex, S-E-C-T-S, -E sex. Can't pronounce it. Sex. You know what I'm saying. Muslim groups are, um, they're, they're running people down on the street with like vans and shit. You know, I'm, I'm not a Muslim guy. Never studied the, the Islamic religion 
in any way, shape. I, I've studied it a little bit, but I'm not Islamic. I'm not Muslim. I don't practice the Muslim faith. But uh, I'm pretty sure there's nowhere in, in the, the was it the Quran, the the holy book of the Muslim people. I'm pretty sure there's nowhere in there where Muhammad uh, talked about running over pedestrians. I'm pretty sure. I'm just saying. Um, my guess is they're just trying to stir up more shit because let's face it a lot of what's going on in the world right now the Muslims are winning um, the whole travel ban that President Pussy Grabber um, has uh, been fighting for in the court system in America that's a win for Muslims. Uh, not shouldn't say Muslims. It's a win for ISIS and militarized Muslims because you're doing exactly what they want you to do. You're 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 fighting their fight with them. The only way you can really beat, because you got to think these people are fucking crazy, all right. And the only way you beat crazy is with crazy. It, it, it is the is the thought process, but that's not quite true. Trump is crazy, don't get me wrong. The way you beat crazy is you have to somewhat ignore it uh, and move on. Because the whole point of a terrorist is they want to terrorize. It's in the name. And by by imposing travel bans and, and all this stuff, the Muslims win. Well, the, 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 the militarized ones. The crazies, as I call them. That's another thing, too, people got to realize. There's like a billion Muslims in the world. You know, it's it's a big freaking religion. Um, not all of them are crazy. Not all of them want to kill everybody. ISIS is a death cult, folks. I did a video about ISIS a few months ago. Um, don't paint all Muslims and Islamics with the same brush. It's easy to, it's convenient to do, and say it, it in the name of, of safety, to lump them all together. But one, that's what they want. ISIS and, and militarized Muslim groups are trying to get the Muslims on the sidelines into the fight. And to do that, they want to make us, everyday average people, hate all of them the same way. They want us to discriminate. Because by discriminating, hopefully they would join the fight. It's twisted logic, but it does make sense. They're a death cult, ISIS is. They want the war. They want to meet the, the, the armies of the West in a place in Syria and fight the last great battle and bring back, you know, heaven on earth. A lot like the, uh, the fundamentalist Christians in this country feel the same way you should really be worried by the way about fundamentalist religious people because fundamentalist religious people um, they're not afraid to die because to them if they die they actually um, this world is so shitty for them anyway that dying is actually an upgrade for those folks so um, it's it's odd it's a very odd thing but uh, but yeah it's a, it's a strange it's a strange way to live it, it I, I don't think um, us Americans can really understand it because you know America is not the greatest you know, people in America work their asses off for little to nothing, but it's not as bad as some of the shitholes in the third world, and in the Middle East for that matter. So that, you know, a, a war of attrition and death is actually a better, uh, a better thing. It's kind of frightening. And there are some fundamentalist Christians who believe the same thing, by the way. Don't think there aren't. Um... 
Back here on the home front, we're at war, by the way, in this country, if you haven't figured it out yet. There's what I like to call the, there's a quiet civil war going on right now in America. A quiet civil war because, um, you know, we're, we're not, well, they're shooting each other now, apparently. Um, but it used to be there was no shots being fired because most Republicans are, are pussies that way. But um, we are at war. Whether you believe it or not, America is not a a a uh, conservative country. I mean, the fact that we watch so much porn, so much porn, just a lot of por midget porn, you know, grandma porn, I brought that up, midgets peeing on grandmother porn. I mean, any kind of sick, fucked up, twisted you know, type of porn you could think of exists. Trust me, I've I've went looking for it, and so we're we're not really the fundamentalist country everybody thinks we are. Um, there is a huge, there is a large fundamentalist base out there that really aren't fundamental either. Um, trust me, Ted Cruz is just as much of a freak. As you are, if not more, M most people. It's funny because when republic, when Democrats, when Democrats get caught, better way of looking at it, when when liberals, educated liberals get caught playing outside of marriage or outside of the law, it's either a mistress or. Maybe some child pornography, maybe. Maybe some, some underage, you know, sub-18, over-16, like 17-year-old sex kind of a thing. And when conservatives get caught in a sex scandal, it usually involves blowjobs in an airport bathroom. I'm not quite sure why. Um, I, I'm sure there's a lesson to be learned there. Um, I... I, I what I'm trying to say is Mike Pence probably wants to suck a dick. That's what I'm thinking. Because Mike Pence is really, really, really conservative. Heavily religious conservative, too. And I found, nine times out of ten, the more conservative and religious conservative you are. I mean, Mike Pence is, is so conservative, he won't have dinner with a woman that's not his wife. He said that, not me. Which makes me believe that Mike Pence wants to suck a dick. He wants a cock in his face. That's what Mike Pence wants. I'm not, I'm just, I'm just, I, I don't know for sure. I haven't talked to Mike. Um, he may not want a cock in the face. He may just, you know, want a nice stiff one in the ass. I don't know. I'm not judging. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it as long as you admit it. And 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 because if, if until you admit it, you know it just crawls up inside you, and it, and it and it ruins your your core. You know what I'm saying? I guess I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you want to suck a dick, just go ahead and suck it. Just get in there, just get in, get on your knees, just take that dick, and you just you stare it down. You just you just. You, you just stare it down, and you just go for it. I mean, you only live once. Um, but you see, they're ashamed of their of their sexual uh, beliefs. They're ashamed of who they are in a lot of ways, and um, because of that shame. Um, They can't. Uh, they can't really talk about it, which is kind of sad. Because I'm perverted. I'll say that right now. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not Donald Trump perverted. I don't like people peeing on me. I'm not. I'm not into that. But you know, I'm. A, I like a. I, I, I'll watch a sex actor too. I'm okay with that. It's entertained me 
on many a night. Um, but I admit that. You see, you got to admit that. You got to be honest. You know, you got to be honest and direct and open up to people. Because if you don't, that's when you you lose your shit and you start opening fire in a McDonald's. You know, that I think that's the biggest problem we have right now is that there's so much shame in our culture. And I'm not sure where it comes from. Maybe it's the fact that, you know, at, in the end, we, we are descendants of religious fanatics. Uh, the Amish themselves were religious fanatics, if you didn't know that. So maybe it's just our inborn... Maybe it's our inborn uh, self-hatred. This is monkey in the tree shit, by the way. Um... This is proof that we're descended some kind of way from from monkeys, I'm sure. This is monkey in a tree shit. Being afraid of the unknown, that kind of thing. But we're at war. I saw a speech that Ted Cruz did. Um, when was it? Like a week or two ago? And, uh... He thanked the people at this, which was it was a religious a religious gathering too, by the way. By the way, Ted Cruz. There's some skeletons in that closet, and I'm not talking about his dad killing Kennedy. Ted Cruz is a fucked up guy, trust me. Anyway, um, Ted Cruz, though, in a speech in front of some religious people, basically said that. Uh, he wanted to thank them for helping him and the Republicans take back America. Now, th those are fighting words. Taking back. That's that's aggressiveness. That's that's aggression. That's fighting. You know, we got to take back our country. Um, and it's kind of scary if you think about it. You know, America itself is is at war with itself right now. We don't really know what we want to be. We have a large population of rural, blue-collar Americans whose fathers grew up building stuff in factories. Who barely had, let's put it this way, my father, who worked for about 35 years for John Deere building tractors, was the only member of his family, the only member, to graduate from high school. Not college high school we're not we're talking no GEDs none of that stuff we're talking nothing past like the ninth grade I'm gonna be the first member of my family including my nieces and nephews to have a four-year degree that's the kind of population I'm talking about back in the day you could be that population and get a job raise a family uh, my parents had four children I know people I know people my age who have you know four or five siblings their parents raised five or six kids working at John Deere all right you can't do that anymore um, one thing I was off work for five to six months, and I have a skilled... Tra I'm a computer programmer, and I couldn't find a job for five or six months. And that's a skilled trade. One that people are saying there's not enough of. Bullshit. Um, and those people are lost. Because they watch their dad do it. And they don't want to go to college. They don't want to work a white collar job. They want to work a, a blue collar job. Have a family. And and raise them like their parents raised them. And you can't do that anymore. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of sad. But, uh, you know, that's the war I'm talking about. On the coasts. New York, California, um, Silicon Valley, Chicago, 
large population centers. A lot of technology there. And to get jobs in that area, you got to have some kind of education. And not a lot of folks in the center of this country have that education. People wonder how Trump got elected. He won all the states where there isn't a lot of jobs that are intellectual by nature. They're manufacturing jobs, coal workers, coal miners. That's how Trump won because these people are desperate because, you know, they're, they've lost their America. These are the people that follow Bill O'Reilly. They lost their America. This America isn't their America anymore. And consequently, you have a minor civil war. Republicans take advantage of that, unfortunately. Which I find a bit disgraceful, but I'm not a politician, what can I say? Well, we're coming up to, um, to 24, 25 minutes of the video here. Probably going to wrap it up for a Father's Day. I'll probably not actually upload this till Monday after work. New job's going great, by the way. I'm enjoying myself immensely. Great people. Um, they do great work. To celebrate, I bought a new guitar. See this? This is this is a this is a an effing guitar. If you can read the headstock, it's an effing guitar. Uh, guitar cost me about a hundred and ten bucks off eBay. It's a Les Paul copy. I actually really, I was going to tear it apart and put new stuff in it. But I'm not going to now. I, I'm actually liking it quite a bit. Yeah, it's a very nice... I bought it from a company. I bought a couple of stuff from them. They're called Butler Music. I think they're out of Tennessee. Don't quote me on that. Uh, someplace by Tennessee, I think. Uh, Butler Music's their name. Uh, they're on eBay. I have bought a couple of things. I have bought a Washburn guitar off them. And I bought a... Uh, it's not in here right now. But I bought a... Uh, I bought a Squire Strat from them. Good company. Very fast shipping, by the way. I recommend Butler Music on eBay for all my guitar people out there. Uh, Going to finish up the video. Um, I went and saw... I've already seen Guardians of the Galaxy Part 2 when it first came out. Uh, last weekend I was kind of bored I was putting a shed up and it started raining uh, and Guardians of the Galaxy 1 came on the cable channel on the TV and I thought what the hell I'll drive into town and go see part 2 again I liked part 2 it's a good movie I, I like all the Guardians of the Galaxy films uh, one thing did occur to me though as I was watching the, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy program. Um, in the second one, um, well, the first one is probably worse than the second one. In the first one, they go to uh, a place called Nowhere, which is actually the severed head of a space celestial. If you read the comics, you know what I mean. Imagine a being that was born when space, when time and space were born, when the universe was born. That's a celestial. And this was the severed head of a celestial floating in space. And they're mining it for, for resources. And as I was watching it, it occurred to me that uh, here we are, somewhere in space, God knows where, and... Uh, they have there's different alien races carving out bone marrow and brain tissue out of this out of this celestial head floating in space and our heroes arrive there and everybody speaks English not, not only do all the Guardians of the Galaxy members speak English, but uh, everybody in the head of the celestial being, 
they all speak English too in the bars which I thought was was kind of odd what are the chances what are the chances I'll leave you on that thought not that I hate Guardians of the Galaxy but the, the mere fact that everywhere they go in the universe everybody speaks English You figure it out. This has been unemployed. I am uh, unemployed. This has been fuzzy logic. I have been your host, the gainfully employed superhero, Maddie Clark. I am going to go turn on my air conditioner. Uh, going to go watch a wrestling pay per view, which I don't have a whole lot of hope for, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Money in the Bank, if you're a wrestling fan out there. Maybe I'll do a review on it later on in the week. My work schedule is kind of crazy. I'm going to see my dad after work. That's one thing, too. My new job, I used to work 7 to 4 at my old job. Now I'm kind of working 7 till... Uh, I like to stick around till after shipping is done because they do all their shipping electronically. You know the tags and everything and uh, I want to make sure it doesn't break uh, so I kind of hang around till shipping's done normally then I go see pop so sometimes I don't leave uh, the town I work in till like 6 30 at night and I don't get home till like a seven quarter after my classes are over with which is kind of nice for my four year by the way I'm getting a 3.79 GPA right now. I'm a genius. I know. I know. I know. You knew that already. Uh, so it's been kind of tough finding time to do these videos, mostly on the weekends, and uploading them. Yeah, I tell you, it's a schmutz. Anyway, that was my Jewish. Anyway. So I'm gonna sign off. I've been here a half an hour. You stay sexy, San Diego. Be good to your mother. Don't drink downstream from the herd. For God's sakes, go buy an instrument. Learn how to play an instrument. Piano, guitar. You can buy synthesizers and electronic pianos for, you know, a couple hundred bucks off the internet these days. Learn an instrument. It's good for you. It helps take away some of your stress. It does for me, anyway. Uh, and get a dog. You need a pet. You need a pet. I'm telling you right now, you need a pet. This has been Fuzzy Logic. You have a good rest of your day, and I will see you soon.